My daughter is a freaking disaster today, so I did not have really time to get a video login, but I have a sweet subject for you. It's doping. Everybody likes doping, everybody likes controversies, everybody likes Lance Armstrong and all the videos came out from him because, you know, it's interesting, it's part of our sport. Our sport. Trail running. Yes, it is part of trail running, ultra running. No matter what discipline you choose, that can be short distance, medium distance, long distance, ultra distance, sky running, that can be mountain running, like you know the word mountain running champions, W M R C V M R C uh, or W M R A World Mountain Running Association Association. There are these uphill races and of course road races, 5k, 10k track as well. But now we talk about trail running. So there are loads of tweets and articles were going on after the Sierra Zinal because of Maud Matisse and Petro Mamou. So Maud Matisse actually uh, get busted for Clomiphene in uh, 2015 March because uh, actually he, she wanted to get pregnant and she took this medication and it's a hormone metabolic modulator, hormonal metabolic modulator and it's uh, interdict, it's prohibited. Uh, and uh, the thing is that she said that she did not know. I understand this. However, when you want to get pregnant, you forget high level, high performance sport, especially something that intense as the ski mountaineering world championship because it's just a brutal uphill effort uh, having high heart rates and the training for it and everything, it's contradictory, it's not going to happen with pregnancy. So when you want to get pregnant, you forget your sport, you put it apart, like Chrissy Wellington, and you know, you get pregnant. So you don't use uh, medications like this, well-known medications that enhance performance during a world championship because you want to get pregnant. It's a kind of itchy, sticky uh, subject uh, in this case as well. So Maud Matisse, I think she was the winner of this year's Sierra Zinal. Petro Mamou, Oumamou, the second behind Kilian Jornet, uh, under the course record of Jonathan Wyatt as well and Sierra Zinal. In 20, he's an editor guy. In 2017, he got busted two times for asthma medication, the blue inhaler, without the TUE, you know, like therapeutic exception uh, form, therapeutic, therapeutic utilizing exception form, whatever. Uh, you know, like if you've never taken anything kind of illegal or legal, half legal, uh, you don't know, like even the blue inhaler, it gives you some little performance edge, what is just enough, it's just enough. We talk about seconds uh, ahead of somebody and it's just enough. You know, like if you take even half an aspirin, asthma medication, and maybe, uh, you know, like some legal stuff like beta alanine, L-carnitine, HMB, uh, creatine and citrulline malate and arginine, carnosine and you know like you will build up a little bit of stack here you can actually uh, scratch down a couple of seconds here and there because they work and if you mix them together with illegal half legal stuff they are just smoking it's good it works so definitely it wasn't just a coincidence that Petro Mamou uh, this year's second Sierra Zina finisher uh, was, you know, like getting busted uh, during the World Mountain Running Championship again in two races, two consecutive races for this asthma medication. So, you know, it's not new, it's going on and people use these legal, half legal, illegal stuff behind your back and we don't talk about elite athletes either. You know, like, let's say, first 10 places in the local sausage race. It's just mind-blowing. And, you know, like, as I said, it's not just now. So, Elisa Desco, she got busted for CERA, what is a continuous erythropoietin EPO receptor activator. Uh, that's an illegal substance as well. And she said that it was part of an antihistamine 
treatment when she get allergic for a Voltaren treatment on her uh, joint after uh, an accident or something. Interesting. So, uh, Greg Volley, you know, the great, great runner, great, great mountain biker and the manager of the entire Salomon team. He's the, I think, social marketing director, whatever in Salomon. He, he got busted twice uh, in, I think, twice in two months, once in the USA for Mahuang. And second time, I think it was in Switzerland for Niketamide. And he said that he wanted to get some ginseng to actually recover faster. You can uh, read the whole article. And then in uh, Switzerland, he took uh, some medication for sore throat what was actually containing the illegal substance, nicotamide. So we are talking about the year 2000, the most utilized drug for athletes was ephedrine. Ephedrine is super cheap and they stacked it up. It's called ECA, the ECA stack. It's like super cheap, easily accessible. Everybody is using it. Bodybuilders to burn fat. Mountain bikers, cyclists to get concentration and of course losing body weight as well. And you know, ECA, ephedrine, caffeine, aspirin, epic blood flow, great breathing, caffeine, you know, like of course stimulant. And ephedrine is a, it's not really a full blown amphetamine, but it's kind of stimulant as well, you know, like it's like, like speed. So, the the 2000 you know like it's it's that's the era where everybody was using this eca stack and you type into wikipedia ephedrine and mahuang will pop up directly you know check the wikipedia article on ephedrine so everybody knew that this mahuang tea uh, or herbal concoction or whatever it was containing ephedrine Everybody, it's the most well-known source for ephedrine, Mahuang. So, yes, uh, he did not know. And when you cannot get ephedrine, you can actually use this ECA stack by adding nicotamide, what is also a kind of stimulant, cheap one. So, either way, that one, uh, that was another one. Jovazenoval. Diamox and the Simil Day, what is a local French, it's a small French, it's getting bigger now, but it's a small race, it's still a small event. The Simil Day, 6000 D, that means uh, D plus and D minus, then even positive, negative in France. It means that it has 3000 meter of gain and loss, Simil D. Uh, you run up 3000 glacier and glacier down, 3000 meter, 60k race. Uh, around 60k, I think, and I think he was the winner of 2017. Diamox, uh, acetazolamide. So, Diamox is actually, I don't know the, the chemical name, acetazolamide. Uh, Diamox is the injection what they give people uh, to adapt to altitude, to high elevations in the mountains, Himalaya. You, you've seen uh, what was that name, that, that, that film with um, Chris O'Donnell, you know, when, uh, it's, it wasn't Cliffhanger, uh, maybe Cliffhanger. No, not actually finger. Either ways, they were giving that Diamox uh, to to each other to adapt to high high altitudes. Of course, similarly, did they are we are climbing up over three thousand meters of the glaciers, so most probably it was working very well for this athlete. Crystal Duval, Heptamol, twenty seventeen uh, Skyrunning World Championship, uh, kilometer vertical, vertical K race. And a uh, very well known Gonzalo Calisto UTMB fifth place EPO as well got busted. And I think Ian Corless talked to him once uh, in an interview, and maybe he was trying to get him again on the show to talk about his EPO use, but it never happened yet. Ian Corless, you know, Talk Ultra, one of the greatest, uh, most interesting trail running podcast out on the net. Talk Ultra, watch it, interesting. So, again. Doping, it's happening in our sport. Smaller, higher levels, depends what kind of races we talk about. Getting sponsors, getting money, getting prize money for uh, breaking some course records or getting the fastest known time. 
getting some uh, acknowledgement and you know like increasing your uh, how can I say presence on the social media because that's a thing as well it's in our sports uh, you can see it in amateurs in professionals as well all kind of stuff you know how easy it's to get it how easy it is to, it to, to get actually uh, even EPO you get you get into Thai, Thailand the uh, online pharmacy and you can order it you don't even need a special browser like a uh, Tor or a uh, other kind of browsers but you know like uh, bring up search results uh, what are blocked by Google no no you go on Google and you check like Chinese or Thailand pharmacies you can check the reviews on them you can go to bodybuilding.com or whatever and you know you can order it it's cheap as well for 100 bucks you have like 100 days or 100 years worth of stuff you know like it's so cheap it's so so cheap and accessible to everybody of course, the other thing is cover your traces. That's another thing, you know, like using VPN and stuff. Uh, this is why, you know, like, uh, how can I say? People still using the old methods. They don't really order for themselves. But it's easy, it's cheap, and it's accessible to anybody doping. So I think it's very much present in our sport of trail and ultra running, especially when we talk about races like UTMB. West, Western States is still like a small race, like giant races like UTMB uh, with all the races together it's like thousands and thousands of participants and the whole buzz around Chamonix is just gigantesque, it's enormous. So you know like if you want to be known you go over there, that's for sure. What can I say? Try not to be one of them, try not to be, not to be fooled. If you are that high level of an athlete that you can be a word beater and you just need the tiny, tiny, tiny bit of edge. There is a new book just came out. Dr. Mark Bob's Peak. Add more sleep to your regime. Eat better. Hydrate like an animal. And that tree will already help. Then you can add other recovery tools. But most people don't understand that super high level athletes should be having 10 to 12 hours a day sleeping, 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 10 hours a night, 2 hours in the afternoon. You want to be the best? Sacrifice that. Don't sacrifice your health. Like you're already sacrificing your health because of that high level of training. But, you know, don't add crap to it. And, you know, like if you are still eating uh, pasta bolognese, just Try to get your nutrition under control and, uh, you know, like sleep and hydrate. Most people are chronically dehydrated, walking around like zombies. If you drink two and a half to three liters of water a day, like a high level athlete, you're nowhere around where you should be. You're nowhere around where you should be. This morning I woke up, I drank one liter of water with a salt solution. I drank afterwards about three and a half to four deciliters of coffee. Uh, it's a special coffee, it's a very light one with herbs, special herbs, what I really like, you know, like to clarify, to purify, to clean my body. And uh, it's great for digestion as well. Uh, I went for a 30K run, then I came home and another salted water solution of one liter went down on my throat. So it was only 9.30 in the morning and I already had two and a half liters of fluid in me. And, you know, I, I had again, now it's 13.30, I had two more jars. You know, I have a one liter jar and I use it to drink. And I fill it up with water every time it's finished. And I went through now the third one today. So three liters plus it's 140 now so i'm already over three and a half liters of fluid and i will probably make a giant herb herbal infusion and uh, maybe uh, drink another little coffee in the afternoon uh, with some herbs as well so definitely going 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 towards a better hydration level getting in more sleep and focusing on nutrition read or listen this book Take notes. Peak Dr. Mark Bubbs. It has a lot of researches, revolutionary stuff, whatever, but cover your basis. That's the most important. Cover your basis. And you know, like, 
in this case, if you are really genetically gifted, have the motivation to work brutally hard and uh, smart as well, of course. And in addition, you have talent too. Yes, you can be a world beater without doping. After, there are sports when it cannot be the case because everybody is on the juice, on the hot sauce. Uh, in certain competitions, I think you will find some, some, you know, some races you will find that 99% of the peloton, I'm not talking about only cycling, like 99% of the competitors are like juiced up. They just have a medical stuff behind them and they use these illegal tools on a way that it's never gonna be detected ever before, after, never. And now the peptide scene is just blowing up and this stuff will be not detectable for a very long time, peptides. And the thing is, some of, those, for some of those interesting peptides are not even performance enhancing, but recovery enhancing. So some athletes with, how can I say, improper form for their sport can be performing uh, later on on a really high level because they can treat their micro injuries with these peptides and you know like boom uh, you will see uh, people uh, blowing on the scene uh, like hell so peptides will be going on very soon and i think it's already actually uh, in the make so doping looking for small gates little doors and uh, contouring the system is already happening in trail and ultra running because you know money is on the line money is what bring in doping thank you for watching sorry for the camera getting uh, in and out of uh, you know like focus not sure what's going on probably i think it's not proper uh, either ways uh, this was a video about doping and i'm gonna come back later in the afternoon on again nutrition and hydration thanks for watching